DNS requests and replies are expected to be performed with fidelity and the authenticity of self-declared identities is taken for granted right now on the DNS. But one of the biggest areas of concern for me uh, for the internet as a whole is the pervasive and malicious impact of distributed denial of service attacks or DDoS attacks. Uh, denial of service attack by itself is characterized by an explicit attempt by the attackers to prevent legitimate users of a service from using that service. Attacks can be directed at any network device, including attacks on routing devices and web servers, email servers, or DNS servers themselves. Now, if an attacker mounts the attack from a single host, uh, we would classify that as just a denial of service attack. On the other hand, if the attacker uses thousands of systems to simultaneously launch attacks against a remote host, now that would be classified a DDoS attack. And clearly, the major advantage to the attacker using a distributed denial of service attack is that the multiple machines that they use, they generate more attack traffic than just one machine. That's a clear thing. But the other piece is that it's harder to turn off such an attack because it's coming at you from many different places at the same time. And in many cases, because the DNS uh, uses this implied implicit trust mechanism, the attackers come in masquerading who they are. They say they are somebody when they really aren't that person. They say they're coming in from a particular IP address when it really isn't that IP address. And on the receiving side, uh, folks like, like us end up having to treat all of the requests that come in as if they're real and legitimate and respond to every one of these attacks in a complete and um, re reliable manner. Users, itself on the, uh, users themselves on the DNS, they, ex they expect the DNS to respond properly, accurately, and quickly. And they expect that the DNS is going to be available at all times. And a DDoS attack can severely disrupt such expectations. In fact, a well-orchestrated DDoS attack has the, capac the capability, in my opinion, to shut down major parts of the Internet's core infrastructure by keeping it so busy, answering bogus queries that it cannot handle real requests. The scale and size of DDoS attacks have increased dramatically in just the past five years. Uh, we were seeing attacks that were typically, you know, 10 gigabits per second in the 2005-2006 time frame. Right now, uh, there are established reports of uh, attacks, DDoS attacks, that are more than 50 gigabits per second. Now, 50 gigabits per second is itself a big attack. But the problem is that a 50 gigabits per second attack is only the tip of the iceberg. The reason I say that <clears throat> is because of the proliferation of botnets. And botnets have become far and away a, the, the most popular way to execute DDoS attacks. Now, depending on what kind of botnets uh, are, are um, present, the scale of DDoS attacks can be really ramped up. In fact, this year, uh, it has come to our, our attention that you can now buy DDoS attacks using botnets. Uh, the botnet operators have, have become sophisticated. They offer cloud-based botnet DDoS services where you can pay as you go, and depending on how much you pay, the size of DDoS attack can be increased, ramped up, or taken down. In fact, some of the botnet operators even uh, offer you uh, guaranteed email delivery. Uh, they, they provide you service level agreements. The kinds of things you expect from the legitimate part of the internet, that's happening on, on the bad part of the internet as well. Now, the reason I'm worried about DDoS and its combination with botnets is the fact that you no longer need a large botnet 
to shut down pieces of the internet. A small botnet is enough to take down core infrastructure, to take down significant pieces uh, of a nation's infrastructure or of corporations themselves. So you don't have to take down the entire internet. You simply have to disrupt a few important pieces of it and everybody or a large number of people get impacted, right? Imagine if, uh, you know, Gmail went down or imagine if uh, Twitter went down, right? These are services that are used. It's not the entire internet, but it certainly is representative in, in, a, in a large way.